Hey everyone, my name is Christian and today we're going to be designing this nice coffee table. This project is perfect for beginners as we're going to be covering essential commands like extrude, offset and boolean. So let's get started. Hello, hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'll show you how you can create this coffee table, where we are going to be using the most essential and popular tools here in Rhino. But before we jump straight into it, I'm going to be showing you the tools that we are going to be using so that you can get more familiar with the software. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to grab the model and hide it for now. And I'm going to be switching from Arctic mode to shaded. The shaded view is the most used display mode here in Rhino because we can clearly see the model this way. Now, the first tool that we are going to be seeing is Polyline. You can either grab it from this toolbar here, or you can type it in in the command bar. Now, if you're familiar with AutoCAD, Rhino is going to be a little bit easier for you, as most of the commands that you can find in that software can also be found here in Rhino. And in order to showcase Polyline better, I'm going to go into a lateral view. So you can just double click on the name here to change the viewport. Let's go to a right view, and I'm going to zoom in with the mouse wheel. I'm going to left click, and now I can start creating some control points. Control points can be manipulated with our gumball. So down here, make sure that you have the gumball on. As you can see, the polyline is a very geometrical curve. That means that it has sharp edges. And again, once you are done creating this curve, you can grab one of the control points and change its shape. I'm going to go ahead and close this polyline and grab both of them and type in join in order to end up with a single curve or a single polyline. And now if I go to a perspective view, I'm going to be able to see what I've created. This is a very random geometry because right now I'm just showing you the essential tools here in Rhino. Next, I'm going to show you how to create an extrusion out of this curve. You can either use the gumball, which as you can see, it has also an extra option, which is this sphere right here or this circle. You can grab it and drag it out like this. Or I can go back with Ctrl plus Z, grab the curve and type in extrude CRV, which is extrude curve. And I end up with something like this. But as you may have noticed, it's much faster if I just grab this gumball and drag it out like so. Now we're going to be looking at offset. I'm going to again grab this curve that we just created and type in the command offset. This is another essential tool, so keep it in mind. In here, I'm going to be typing in five centimeters like so. And that's how you can offset a curve. Now, if I select this newly created curve, you will see that in our gumball, an extra option has now appeared, which is the cut tool. If I click it and drag it, I will be able to cut through an object like this. So this is the way that you can use polyline, extrusion and offset alongside with the gumball, which is super important. So always keep it on. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's go ahead and model our coffee table. I'm going to be grabbing all of this and delete it as we no longer need it with the delete key on our keyboard. Now let's jump back into our viewports and I'm going to be starting with the front view. So let's go ahead and double click on it. And the first thing that I want to do is to create a reference line for the dimensions of our coffee table. In this case, I'll just type in line and I want to start drawing from the origin for which I'll be activating the grid snap down here. And now I'll be able to snap my cursor to the grid. So that's sometimes helpful. I'm going to be clicking once and now I'll be disabling the grid snap so that I have more freedom. But I also want to snap 90 degrees. So for this, I'm going to go down here and activate ortho and the height of our coffee table. It's going to be 60 centimeters. So I'm going to be typing in 0.6 as I'm working with meters. And before you continue, you can check the units that you're working with by typing in units on the command bar. In here, the model units is set as meters, as you can see. Okay, I'm going to be canceling this. And again, typing in line, make sure to activate grid snap to snap to the origin. I'll be typing in 0.6, which is 60 centimeters. And for the width, probably 65 centimeters will do. So I'm going to be snapping to this end point here and you will be able to do so if you have the O snap turned on in here. And also making sure that you have the end point option activated. Now I'm going to be typing in 0.65. Let's actually close this. So 0.6 on height and then 65 centimeters on width again. So we have kind of like a squarish shape now. Let's join the curves together and there we go. So this shape that we just created, it's going to serve us as a reference. 
but I don't want this shape to get in the way, so I'm going to be selecting it like so and typing in lock. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is to model the supports for our coffee table. Let's snap to our reference geometry and I'm going to be starting with an L-shaped curve. And the width of these supports is going to be 5 centimeters. So I'll be typing in 0.05, which is 5 centimeters. But I don't want the edges to be sharp. So I'm going to be typing in fillet. And one thing to keep in mind is that you must always check out the command bar because that is where you will find the instructions that Rhino needs to complete the commands. In this case, it's telling me to select the first curve to fillet, which is this one, and the second one, which is going to be this one. But I see that the fillet is way too small, so I'm going to be typing in fillet again. Or to repeat the last command, you can also press the space bar on your keyboard. Right now, I've got two centimeters. So I'm going to be doubling that to 0.04. So four centimeters and there we go. Next, I'm going to be closing this shape with a simple line like so. Let's grab everything and type in join. So we end up with a single curve. Now, in order to continue, it would be best for us to go into a perspective view. So double click on the viewport and double click on perspective. And one thing to be careful with is that Rhino will always orbit around the origin and not your object. In order to tell Rhino to orbit around an object, you're going to be wanting to type in Z plus S. So zoom select it. And this way you'll be orbiting around your geometry. Now remember that we can extrude a closed curve with our gumball. But in order to be more precise about this, you can just click once on the gumball and you will be able to type in the precise dimensions, which in this case is going to be five centimeters. And there we go. So in order to create that additional detail right here, we need to create an extra surface or an extra polygon on our top surface. And we can use multiple methods for that, but I'll be going with the most simple one. For this, I'll be needing to select an individual surface. But as you can see, Rhino is actually selecting my whole object when I left click. In order to select individual surfaces, you can press and hold the Ctrl plus Shift keys. And the surface that I want to be selecting is this one over here. So I'm going to be moving it on the opposite direction of the X axis by four centimeters. So that's going to be negative 0.04. And now I'm going to extrude the surface. So I'll be clicking on this option and typing in four centimeters again. And as you can see, I've been able to create an additional surface up here. Now I'm going to be selecting this with Ctrl plus Shift and drag it upwards by 0.04 centimeters. But as you can see, this doesn't look that good because I need to chamfer this detail so that we end up with a smooth result. So let's grab both of these edges with Ctrl plus Shift and type in Fillet Edge. Now let's type in 0.05, which is five centimeters. And that's a little bit too much. Let's go with four centimeters. And there we go. Now, because we're working with such a small scale, some minimal errors are likely to happen, but we can just delete them. So I'm going to be grabbing these two faces with Ctrl plus Shift and deleting them this way. And in order to fill this void that we have in here, I'm going to be selecting this object and typing in the command cap. And there we go, as good as new. Now the next step is to duplicate this object and rotate it. So let's select it. And as you can see, our gumball already has this rotating options. So let's unable ortho. And in order to duplicate objects here in Rhino, we can use the Alt key. So if I press the Alt key and move this on the X axis, you can see that I'm able to duplicate it. And the same thing happens if I press the Alt key and this rotation option on our gumball. Let's rotate this by 135 degrees. Now grab it and to move this object precisely, I'm going to be typing in the command move. Now make sure that you have the mid O snap selected. Grab this point here and take it to the midpoint of our original shape. Now grab this one again, Alt 135 degrees and rotate it again. And follow the same steps. Move, grab this point here and place it right here. Now I'm going to be checking our model on the Arctic mode. And if you cannot see the edges as I can, you can go into Options, all the way down to View, Display Modes, Arctic, and make sure that down here you have the Show Surface Edges on. Now at this point, we no longer need the shape that we were using as reference, so I'm going to be typing in Unlock. I'm going to select this and delete it. And now I want to get rid of this intersections and basically end up with a single object made up of our three models that we have in here. 
For this, I'm going to be using a Boolean function, but before that, I'm going to be creating a circle. So I'm going to be typing in circle, which is going to be serving us as the top of our coffee table. Grab this midpoint in here and drag it all the way over here. Now we can use that Boolean function. So I'm going to be grabbing these three objects to unify them and type in Boolean union. And there we go. This looks really, really clean. And before we continue, I no longer need any of my past curves except for my circle. So I'm going to be selecting all of them with cell CRV, which is select curves and deselecting the circle with a control key and deleting the rest of the curves on our model. Now I'm just going to be selecting the circle and extruding it upwards like this with my gumball. And to add an extra detail here, I'm going to grab the original circle, drag it upwards and scale it down with our gumball. So you can scale down using these squares and in order to scale it proportionally, make sure to press the shift key and use the cut tool that we already saw to cut through our circle and end up with this additional detail. And there you have it, a minimalist coffee table. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to like, subscribe and leave your comments below. Let me know what you'd like to model next. Bye for now.